Hi, my name is Ayrin Zucchelli. I am a designer, consultant, and researcher of ethnic garments. Kathy asked me to take a look at this poncho, and this is what I have to share with you. The poncho is a Mayo outwear garment, traditional of many Native American peoples. In the US, it's mostly associated to Southwestern wear and Mexican wear, but it's present in many other countries throughout the Latin America, including Brazil. The name can vary from culture to culture. Sometimes it's known as Gabon, like in Mexico, or Palo de Gaúcho, like in Brazil. But it doesn't matter the name, we can all recognize what we're talking about. It is a comfy, versatile, sleeveless article of clothing. It is impossible for me to attest for sure uh, where this is from without further investigation. However, it does look very similar to the ones of the Aymaras and Quechua people. Originally from Peru, these people exist in other countries like Argentina, Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, and Ecuador. These people express part of their identities through the weaving of textiles. And like typical Highlanders, the way that they weave the fibers, the amount of stripes and the colors make it possible for us to identify who they are as individuals. In that sense, it's very similar to Scottish tartan because we can see the amount of stripes and what are the colors and then identify uh, in, in what group this individual belonged to. If it's a clan, a sub-clan, and you know, we can tell just looking at the color and the pattern, a trained eye can tell where the individual that is wearing it's from. Also, in a similar way, the plaid of the kilt comes from the Gaelic word plaid, that means blanket. And similarly, in Mapuche, uh, in Araca Araucanian uh, language, uh, from Chile, the word poncho, the word for poncho, uh, ponto, it means woolen fabric that can be translated as blanket as well. So it was just a fun fact. <laughs> and it's funny because every time I make a parallel with my students about European ethnic wear, you can see their little eyes sparkling because they understand the connection instantly. Because they may not understand Peru, but they do understand uh, tartan. They, they've seen it, it might be part of their culture. And it's funny because they don't see themselves as ethnic. They don't see that as ethnic wear. They see us as ethnic, but they don't see themselves as ethnic. It's ethnic. <laughs> But anyways, how would they wear this poncho? Rebecca Church said that this stereotype is that men typically wear uh, loose slacks, sandals, um, and then the loose poncho top over a button-down shirt, and that is topped with a wide uh, brimmed hat. And again, patterns will vary greatly from one ethnic group to another. And the women that weaves it may add a little touch of her own personality, kind of like a signature um, of her weaving. So within a community, we can identify uh, stripes and patterns. They are typical to the entire group, but we can also identify that signature of that one weaver. Seabolt observed in her study uh, two categories of ponchos. The palais, that is a more colorful one, and a plain brown poncho, or poncho pardo. In her study, she saw that the runa men wear the red palais poncho for formal community events, such as community assemblies uh, and festivals. The red poncho identifies a man in his community, his age and status. It identifies the discourse between the man and his community. The brown poncho or poncho pardo is a genetic garment of the contemporary Andean campesino. It no longer identifies the ethnic community, but instead identifies the wearer as a peasant, a, a peasant farmer, and a member of the state's market economy. Men would wear it while working on the fields and when they go to the market, to the city or otherwise deal with 
Spanish speaking culture. The brown poncho marks the upwardly mobile peasant farmer and reflects his class economic status and worldview. Sometimes this plain poncho can be black too. And like I said, sometimes the women that wove it uh, will add stripes to this plain garment. And Siebold comment on her research that not necessarily the husband agrees with this fashion choice, which I think is sensational because a show was two things. It shows us that it may be something that the woman would add to remind herself and remind others of their culture. She may be proud of her heritage and she wants to proudly uh, show that to the world. It's plain, but remember where you came from. Or, and it can also show female empowering because despite her husband not being quite keen of uh, this type of weaving, uh, it is what's going to be. I make the weave. I'm making this poncho. You're going to wear what I'm serving you. <laughs> also, we were not able to identify if this poncho has any sort of religious identity. It is possible that it got labeled as shamanic. Uh, because of tourists and with that it creates yet another level of identity. Uh, Siebold describes in her research that the weavings are sold to a middleman who market them for the tourist grade. The community then becomes indigenous as the frame of reference changes to, to the state and even inter international perspective. Community members are aware of the multiple layers of identity available to them as just as they speak in different voices, so too do the textiles that they weave and the fashions that they choose to wear. The Met Museum has an excellent uh, extant of the 18th century, very similar to this one. Uh, it's similar in colors, but it has more stripes. Uh, the poncho that they have seems to have a different construction, but it is also of uh, part of the color with green stripes. And due to rights restrictions, this image cannot be enlarged, view, view it a full screen or download, but you can see it uh, with the accession number. I'm gonna leave the link on the description. And it's a great example of how these women uh, weave them because they maintain their tradition, but yet adding little touches of their own expression of how they see their heritage, their tradition, and their art. And with that, we can see their own creations. However, what we understand today as traditional wear is actually um, an evolution of 16th century Spanish peasant wear, according to Blenda Femenius. In Peruvian costume and European perceptions in the 18th century that dress. As you know, this is the time period that I research and I am a little bit obsessed with this. This theme is just so, so rich and I could talk about it for hours but I won't <laughs> because we don't have time for this. But how about we do another one next time? <laughs> However, if you want to know more, I do recommend uh, the reading. To conclude, I'd like to remember that Highland people are extremely resilient and brave. And the same way that the Scottish people descent may not wear the kilt every day, the Indian Highlanders, such as Ayamada and Keshua have a history of struggle and adaption. And as reported by Rebecca Church in the early days after the Spanish conquest, there was a definitive distinction between the European people and the indigenous people from Peru. As time passed and more and more people began to interbreed, the distinction became blurred. While it's true that some individuals may still wear their traditional dress every day, it may also be possible that they only wear that in festivities or special occasions. So in that sense, 
this poncho could have shamanic a shamanic identity if the person that owns it wears it during their religious practice because the identity is given not only by the people that produce the garment but also um, by the people that wears it so we would need a little bit more research into that thank you so much for inviting me my name is Ayron Zucchelli and i'll see you next time